Today we're going to be combining lessons 22 and 23, which both use the LCD display module. First, lesson 22 is simply connecting the LCD display up and displaying the message, Hello World. This module is a little more complicated than previous ones. We have many more pins to connect. We have our ground and plus five, a pin that adjusts the contrast, so the, the brightness of the, of the display, a register to control the memory when you're writing to it, a read or write pin to read or write from the module, and an enable pin. There are also pins required, digital outputs. We will be using four of those to write the data to the display. We have an anode and a cathode that control the LED for the backlighting. As we see, the circuit diagram is a little more complicated than normal. Here is our variable resistor to control the brightness of the display, our ground and plus 5 volts, the VO, we see that's going to the middle of the potentiometer there to adjust the brightness. We have our enable and right select pins and our four pins for our data connections. This is how Enigu suggests you have it wired up. For reasons best known to myself, I've decided to wire it slightly differently, as we can see in the arrangement here. I've not used the larger breadboard, only the small one, to put the potentiometer on. Let's take a look now at the sketch. Importantly, remember to include the liquid crystal library, and we tell the library which pins we're going to be using. Pins 7 and 8 are the RS and enable, 9, 10, 11 and 12 are the data outputs. In the setup, all that we need to do is to tell the module the number of columns and rows. We have 16 possible character positions in two rows, and we will simply print out hello world, and then in the loop, uh, a seconds count, which is going to increment. So it sets the cursor to the correct position on the display, and then displays the number of seconds since it was reset. I've uploaded the sketch, so now if I connect the module, we can see the hello world message and the incremental seconds count. I can just show you here with the potentiometer how you can vary the backlight. So obviously turning it that way, it goes out, back to, to normal. And if we continue in this direction, eventually it's totally whited out. And there you can clearly see the 16 columns by two rows. Back that off again, and there's our, our message. That's quite a simple introduction to the LCD module. Next we'll move on and add the thermometer function. In the thermometer example, we simply add a thermistor and a 10k ohm resistor. The thermistor is described here. It's a special type of resistor that is obviously sensitive to temperature and can change as much as 100 ohms per degree of temperature change. What we have here is a negative temperature coefficient device. There are also positive coefficients, and they're normally used as, as fuses. It's commonly referred to as a polyfuse. The circuit, much the same as before, the thermistor is this symbol here, and the 10k ohm resistor to ground. The thermistor goes to plus 5 and connects to the analog input 0. Thermistors are an analog device. That's the layout that they have. I've already loaded the sketch onto the module, so let's take a look at that now. We can see the temperature currently around 18 degrees. The thermistor is this tiny little bead on the breadboard there. If I bring my soldering iron towards the thermistor, not actually touching it, but clearly the temperature is going to be rising significantly. And when I move it away, it cools down. I've elected to use the degrees C in the sketch, which we'll look at now. You can change that to Fahrenheit should you wish. In the sketch then, as before, you must include the liquid crystal library, and you would have done that from the first example with just the display. Here it's defined the pins again, and that should be RS, the uh, select and enable pins, and our four digital pins for the, the value. Again, 16 characters by two columns, 
and in the loop it does an analog read of the A0 pin and it calculates the temperature first of all in degrees Kelvin. After that it converts it to either Celsius or Fahrenheit. This value here is the absolute zero value of minus 273.15 degrees. Here is where you would modify it if you wish to change to Fahrenheit. You can see the lines here with the forward slashes is commenting out this line where it would print in Fahrenheit and there it is as you can see it in Celsius. And finally at the end of delay I've actually changed that from half a second to one second and that's all there is to it.